Welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. Thank you for doing that. And for today's Daily Word, we're going to go into the book of Deuteronomy to our reading there in chapter 4. And I want to to focus this in on verse 2 there where we read, Do not add to or subtract from these commands I am giving you. Just obey the commands of the Lord your God I am giving you. And this is a part of of Moses, essentially his final instruction to the people as they're going to be entering into the promised land. As as you will remember, God tells Moses that he's not going to be allowed to enter the promised land. He can go up on Mount Nebo, he can look across and he can see into the promised land, but he'll not be allowed to actually enter. And so Moses is going to be handing leadership over to Joshua and he is preparing the people and he says here I'm giving you these commands on behalf of God these are these are the Lord's commands he's giving him what we would call the scriptures the Bible and you you should not first of all add to it or second of all subtract subtract to it just just do what it says, right? And that seems fairly simple, and, and I think there's a part of us that would say, okay, why, why does this even need to be said? Um, but we, we all, I think we have to admit, have this temptation to manipulate the Scriptures. We do. To forget about parts, to add things that aren't there. And so let's just kind of take these one at a time. Like, why would we do that? Why would we add... And, and typically, we, we add because of pride. We see that the religious leaders, the Jewish religious leaders, actually add a whole layer of commands on top of God's commands. And this is part of what Jesus deals with, with uh, the religious leaders, is that they're just piling up this, this burden and not helping the people carry it. They're not enabling people to actually do what God wants them to do. And, and really, this is, this is pride. It's a revolt against the grace of God, our dependency on God. And so we will, we will sort of invent legalisms. We'll, we'll say, well, you have to do this, you have to do that if you're a true believer. And, and we, we add to the Word of God things that aren't really there. And this is a, a very serious thing. And also it's a very serious thing to subtract, to take things away. Why would we do that? Well, typically when we're talking about taking things away, we do that for passion. So pride and passion. Pride we tend to add things. Passion we tend to take things away. And that is that in our uh, stubbornness, in our insistence to gratify the desires of our flesh, we'll just essentially ignore commands or we'll pretend that commands are somehow confusing, they're not clear to understand, oh, I'm not really sure what God's saying here, what God wants me to do. And and really, it's about a stubbornness in regards to our desires, the sinful desires of our flesh. And I would point out to you that this was not just an issue that God points out for the people of Israel as they're entering the promised land. This is a perennial issue. We all have to own this as a part of original sin, a part of our brokenness as a human race. In Proverbs chapter 30, beginning at verse 5, verse 5 and 6, every word of God proves true. He is a shield to all who come to Him for protection. Do not add to His words, or He may rebuke you and expose you as a liar. And not only that, we can go to the very end of the book. If we're wondering, is is this something that God wants to continue to bring to our attention and to warn us against? The answer, yes. This is at the very end of Revelation in chapter 22, beginning at verse 18. And I solemnly declare to everyone who hears the words of prophecy written in this book, if anyone adds anything to what is written here, 
God will add to that person the plagues described in this book. And if anyone removes any of the words from this book of prophecy, God will remove that person's share in the tree of life and in the holy city that is described in this book. This is a big deal. This is God's holy and inspired word. And, and what is plain in God's word, what is, uh, what is a part of the, the, the whole counsel of God, must not be manipulated, dismissed. We, we, if we do that, in our pride, we consider ourselves, if you think about it, smarter than God, more capable than God of communicating what is true. God's Word is true. His Word declares every word of God proves to true. What He communicates, what He commands, it is true, it is right, it is best for us. And, and it is for us, in the words of the old hymn, to trust and obey. To say, you know what, where Scripture disagrees with me, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. And I will trust in the Word of the Lord. I will trust the Lord with my whole heart and lean not on my understanding. And here's what happens. This, this is a witness. This hymn goes all the way back to 1887. This is a witness of believers who have chosen to trust in the Word of God. Listen to this. This is verse 3. But we never can prove the delights of His love until all on the altar we lay. For the favor He shows, for the joy He bestows, are for them who will trust and obey. What we find is that when we surrender to God, as we surrender our lives to His Word, as we trust Him, I trust you, God, what you say, we actually learn to delight in His presence, learn to delight in His Word. Read Psalm 119 and just see the, the delight that King David has in the Word of God. It is for those who will trust and obey. May it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. And until we get a chance to speak again, May God bless you and keep you.